Good morning. I'm Pastor Daniel Flukey, serving at St. Peter Lutheran Church in Green, Iowa. And today is April 26, the third Sunday of Easter. And we are continuing our series, Isolated, looking at places in the Bible where God shows up and works through people who feel alone. Wherever you are today, whether you're watching in real time on Sunday morning or sometime later, whether you're a member here at St. Peter, or even if you've never heard of Green, Iowa, know that you are welcome. And I pray that God will use this time of worship to bless you. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please join me in the call to worship. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. When we hide behind locked doors, you declare to us peace. When we wander uncertain on the road, you reveal yourself to us. When we are trapped, imprisoned by the burdens of this world, you show us we are never alone. In the stillness, help us to recognize your presence with us. In our isolation, Christ forms us into a community of faith, the body of Christ. Come, let us worship our risen Savior. Together in the presence of God, we confess our sins and our need for the resurrection and new life found in Jesus Christ. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Beloved of God, hear this good news. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. No longer are you separated from God, no longer are you isolated. May the presence of God with you give you hope and joy, assure you of the forgiveness won for you by Christ on the cross, and inspire you to life abundant. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your Son makes himself known to all who seek him. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him with us on our journey through life. Come to us in our loneliness and despair, bringing the hope of resurrection and new life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. If you haven't already, I invite you to comment good morning in the chat as a greeting to those worshiping with you. And while you're saying good morning, I will say thank you to those helping with today's worship service. Olivia Drolly reading the psalm, David Crow and Jan Osier reading the gospel, and Kristen and Sandra providing music. And if you haven't helped with the service yet, it looks like, unfortunately, you still have plenty of time to get involved with online worship, and I'd love to include you. So comment or send a message to me, and I will get you a reading or a prayer for a future week. Now, we continue with Psalm 73. Psalm 73, verses 21 through 28. When my mind became embittered, I was sorely wounded in my heart. I was stupid and had no understanding. I was like a brute beast in your presence, yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me by your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And having you, I desire nothing upon earth. Though my flesh and my heart should waste away, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Truly those who forsake you will perish. You will destroy all who are unfaithful. But it is good for me to be near God. I have made you my refuge. Lord God, to tell of all your works. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on that day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all the things that had happened. 
While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk alone? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all of this, it is now the third day since they, these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he was going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to say with them, when he was at the table with them, he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. I saw a great video the other day titled, Explaining the Pandemic to My Past Self. It's a woman imagining traveling a few months back in time and explaining to her January self what's going on in the world today. She can't say exactly what's coming, but she has some suggestions, like her January self should sell all of her investments and buy stock in Zoom, which would have been a pretty nice tip, wouldn't it? And she also proposes that this time in January would be a great time to take up a new hobby or get a dog. And the January version of herself says she can't, because she has too much travel coming up for work. She won't have enough time at home to do any of that. Funny, right? I'll link to it in the comments so you can watch it later. Not right now. Later. After worship and the Zoom coffee hour. But I'm willing to bet that you probably had some plans that you hoped to do this spring and summer, right? Kristen and I had been looking forward to traveling to Wisconsin to visit family last week, right after Easter. One of Kristen's grandmothers still hasn't gotten to meet Micah, so we were looking forward to introducing her to her first great-grandchild. Our high school seniors had planned on a graduation ceremony and parties to end the school year. People across the state have been preparing for Ragbri. That's canceled for the year. For the church, Synod Assembly is postponed until August. And of course, beyond all the events that have been postponed or canceled, tens of thousands of families around the world had planned on much more time with loved ones. And the virus has taken that away. So many of our hopes and dreams and plans have been dashed, and we still have a long way to go. 
For the third week in a row today, our gospel story takes place on that first Easter Sunday. Two weeks ago on Easter, we heard about the two Marys going early in the morning to find Jesus' tomb and finding it empty and hearing from an angel that Jesus has been raised. And then, last week, we heard about that evening. Ten of the eleven disciples were hiding together in a locked upper room, and Jesus came and stood among them, saying, Peace be with you. But remember, Jesus had a lot more than eleven followers. Crowds of people have been following him and listening to his teachings. Back in Luke chapter 10, Jesus had sent out not twelve, but seventy disciples in pairs to go spread the good news. So the eleven disciples in that upper room are the core group, but there are many others who believe in Jesus, and like the eleven, they're experiencing grief and trauma after his death. One of those others is named Cleopas, and on this Sunday afternoon, Cleopas and a companion are on their way out of town. And Luke does not give us, unfortunately, the companion's name, but there's a good chance that it's Mrs. Cleopas, his wife. And we don't know exactly why they're traveling, but I suspect they're trying to get away. After Jesus, their teacher, is arrested and killed, some of his disciples, some of his followers, go into hiding, while others flee. On their lonely trek out of Jerusalem down the seven-mile road to Emmaus, these two are processing what's happened. And on their way, Luke tells us, Jesus comes to walk and talk with them. But they don't recognize him. They're kept from recognizing him. I wonder, have you ever had the experience of running into someone and not recognizing them because they're out of context? It happened to me not that long ago at, I think it was at Target in Waterloo, where someone came up to me and started talking, and it took me several minutes to figure out who they were, because I'm used to seeing them at church in green on a Sunday morning, not in a store in Waterloo on a Thursday night. So it's strange that Cleopas and Mrs. Cleopas don't recognize Jesus, but I believe it. After you witness someone dying, you don't expect to run into them on the road two days later. And Jesus might have looked a little bit different, too. Maybe he got a haircut in the tomb. At the very least, he's not beaten and bloody like the last time they saw him. I wonder how often you and I miss seeing Jesus around us because he doesn't look like what we expect him to look like. How often do we miss seeing Jesus at work in the world around us because he's in places where we don't even think of looking for him? Anyway, Jesus comes up to these two disciples on the road and he asks them what they're discussing and their response to him includes some of the saddest words in the Bible. Three words. We had hoped. We had hoped. You know what that's like, don't you? You know what it's like to have your hopes dashed, your plans disrupted, to discover that you've misunderstood, to be overwhelmed by forces beyond your control. Maybe you're experiencing that right now. We had hoped he would be the one to redeem Israel. You can imagine the grief and the isolation these two travelers are feeling. They must feel so foolish for planning and dreaming, for thinking this Jesus guy was actually the Son of God, the Savior who would redeem Israel. And of course, the irony is that not only is he the one to redeem Israel and the whole world, that's exactly what he's been doing. That's why he died. But they don't understand that. They don't know that. And as they walk, Jesus engages them in what has to be the ultimate Bible study, interpreting to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. Wouldn't you love to hear that? What I appreciate 
is that before he gives them answers, Jesus lets them dwell in their questions and their grief. Jesus does not just come and fix everything with quick answers. He journeys alongside them. He enters into their isolation and accompanies them. I don't know about you, but I find it incredibly encouraging that Jesus meets them while they're in despair, as they're questioning and wondering. These two are really good proof that you don't need to have all the answers for Jesus to come meet you. And also, notice that Jesus meets them in their home. Jesus is not isolated or quarantined, but he comes to those who are, if not quarantined, at least alone and afraid, uncertain about the future. When they finally realize who Jesus is, when they recognize him in the breaking of the bread, Jesus disappears. And Cleopas and his companion immediately turn around and race the seven miles back to Jerusalem to share the good news with the other disciples. And as Luke tells it, these two who had met him on the road are still there that night in the upper room when Jesus appears saying, peace be with you. This story is the last we hear of Cleopas and his wife. But I wonder what happened to them. Because even after all this, the hopes and plans they'd had before are still disrupted. They won't get to spend much time with Jesus before he ascends back to the Father. There's even a decent chance that these two end up getting killed for their faith. Certainly nothing will ever be the same again for them. But for now... They have a newfound hope. As you continue this week to stay at home or to go out for essentials, may you too encounter Jesus in unexpected places, in the ordinary stuff of life. May you recognize Jesus journeying with you, accompanying you in the disruption, giving you new hope. And may the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to sing along or to listen to the words of our song of the day, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Speaking of hopes and plans being disrupted, you might remember from the beginning of Lent, it seems like a long time ago now, our congregation was participating in ELCA World Hunger's 40 Days of Giving, 
and we set a goal of raising $500 for world hunger. And personally, I actually thought that goal might be too low and $500 would be no trouble. So far, I believe we've raised about $10. So in addition to urging you to keep supporting St. Peter and the ministry we're doing here, I encourage you this week, if you're able, to set aside a little bit to give to people who are hungry, perhaps locally through the food bank here in Green, or perhaps through World Hunger. If anything, the need is much greater now than we expected, than anyone expected. I read an article yesterday that predicted famines and hunger from the pandemic are going to end up having a higher death toll worldwide than the virus itself. And if you still have a cup on your table for collecting coins each day, keep collecting them, and when we get back together, you can bring them with to put into the soup pot. Also, if you or someone you know here in town are short of food right now, send me a message and we can help. Now, let us join in prayer, and I'll end each part with Lord in your mercy, and you can respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, you come to us in our isolation and our loneliness, and you accompany us on the journey of life. I pray for each of the people watching this service, that you would give them the eyes of faith to see and recognize your presence with them. Help us to know you as the strength of our hearts and our portion forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have had their plans disrupted this year, for camps and mission organizations without participants, for students without summer jobs, for business owners without income. Help us in the midst of our fears and concerns to look to you as our refuge, our rock and salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the many people in our world who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, and for those who seek to help. Thank you for all those in professions who give of themselves to care for and protect others. Help each of us to use what we have to love our neighbors in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, there is so much for which we could pray, and you know the prayers of our hearts. And so in this moment of silence, we lift to you our concerns and our gratitudes. All of our prayers, spoken and unspoken, we bring in the name of Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We have one more hymn to sing, but for those watching on Sunday morning, we're going to try something new this week right after this and have an online fellowship time. So hopefully you saw it in my email update earlier this week and you have that Zoom link. Otherwise, I'll post it in a moment in the comments on Facebook and YouTube. There's no agenda. You don't need to be dressed up. Just pop in and say hi. So I will be here for the next half hour or so, and you'll have to provide your own coffee or donuts or whatever you have to eat, but I hope you'll join us. Now we sing together, Now the Green Blade Rises.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.